The Canadians recently published um, in Blood their uh, retrospective series of, of their institutional treatment protocol uh, for this primary mediastinal B-cell lymphoma type subtype. Um, it's a very rare disease and um, and just seems to be a distinct biological entity. And the problematic um, situation we face at the moment is that many of these historically were treated just uh, similarly to diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. These patients usually are young and present with large mediastinal masses. Due to the fact that there is no extrathoracic disease, often um, chemotherapy has been consolidated with, um, with radiotherapy. But the problem with radiotherapy in a patient who is young and has a large mediastinal mass is that there are a lot of organ toxicities, particularly late toxicities, such as cardiac, second malignancies and carotid thyroid, if, if the field includes those, um, those areas, that we need to try and avoid because these patients, if they are cured, do live a very long time. Radiotherapy has been um, in the past something that people have tried to avoid in, in many different um, methods. And as I said, the Canadians reported their study, um, which was PET-directed radiotherapy, where patients received RCHOP and then had an end-of-treatment PET scan. The PET scan then dictated whether patients received consolidative involved field radiotherapy or not. And those with a positive PET scan did receive radiotherapy and those with a negative PET were observed. And their um, outcomes, particularly in the PET negative group who did not receive radiotherapy, were excellent. The problem we have is that we don't know whether PET positive patients um, should have radiotherapy. We don't know if the extremely bulky disease needs radiotherapy and there haven't been any randomised trial data that have read out yet. The um, IELSG uh, in, um, in Europe ha have um, conducted a study and we are eagerly awaiting the results. This is a randomised study um, asking this exact question. Other groups have intensified the chemotherapy using um, regimens such as dose-adjusted EPOC to try and improve the, um, the PET negativity rates at the end of, um, of their treatment and therefore avoiding radiotherapy. And this strategy is used in many institutions around the world. However, those trials were single um, phase two studies, not randomised, and uh, the use of PET at the end of the treatment, at the end of the dose-adjusted EPOC, um, was uh, protocolised to be in a serial manner. So those patients who had some PET positivity often continued to have um, PET scans um, over following months to um, monitor that PET positivity. And the reason that this strategy is used is because approximately 50% of patients who do have PET positive um, in their mediastinal mass do not actually have um, active tumour and only about 20% do actually relapse with disease. Fraught with, um, with problems in this disease is, is relapse because it is largely chemo-insensitive. It occurs usually in the first 12 to 18 months and, um, and if patients do not get to transplant, they often have very poor outcomes. Although recently this has improved with the um, advent of um, the PD-1 inhibitors, particularly pembrolizumab, and the data that, uh, that show that this is efficacious in relapse disease. And we are um, commencing a, a clinical trial in Australia to try and avoid radiotherapy in the upfront setting. This will be run by my colleague Chan Chia through our ALLG um, cooperative group, assessing pembrolizumab upfront with RCHOP uh, as a, uh, an attempt to spare patients from radiotherapy, but also from intensive chemotherapy in treatment naive disease. Overall, most patients um, who have a negative PET do very, very well um, and, and probably don't need radiotherapy, but those with a positive PET, they probably don't all need radiotherapy because some of those are not um, representative of disease, but we uh, will need to await the um, outcomes of the randomised trial to, to fully determine the role of, of this strategy.